This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. It's press conference day with me, Ben Shalom. Ben, Richard Riakpo, you told everyone today at the press conference he's one of the first fighters you went after when this deal was announced. Now here on the verge of world title shot, it must be personally satisfying for you to be here. Yeah, no, he was one of the first fighters I, I spoke to. Um, I know Richard in and outside the ring, so I know how much this means. He was 18 months inactive, so to go from that to headlining shows consistently, being this active is something we spoke about, something we dreamt about. He's here now. I think he has all the attributes to go on and win a world title and be a star of the cruiserweight division, and this is another step, and I feel, I feel like he's a fighter that there's always an excuse as to why he won. He beat Billy Smith, he beat Tommy McCarthy, he beat Dion Juma, he beat Jack Massey, he beat... What other... Sam Hyde? What other British fighter goes through division like that? And learning on the job as well, because he did start late, and he's now developing his, his game. I think he's he's making a lot of progress with Angel and Garcia now in the in the, in the camp, and so he's ready, and uh, he feels like this is a final step, and Turchi is a tough fight. He obviously, Dylan Brajon, Tony Conquest, I remember those wins. He had a tough night, obviously, against Tommy McCarthy on a split decision, but he can knock, he can knock people out. He's got 14 knockouts himself. It's a, it's a serious fight, and he's got to watch it, and he'll feel like he has the style to take to Richard as a southpaw come-forward fighter. It's going to be a difficult night. If Richard can deal with this, next step, hopefully, world titles, and yeah, satisfying, because invested in Richard um, personally, professionally, and it's just nice to see that now he's getting towards the world title that he always dreamt of. So I was going to ask you about, Turchi can punch a bit, Richard Riakpo, I'm sure his team have reiterated, this isn't a fight you can afford to switch off in, do you think that'll bring the best out in him though? 100%, Richard just doesn't, nothing phases him, every time people might be doubting this or doubting that, nothing phases him. He gets in the ring, he knows he's got a secret, secret weapon and he only needs to almost land once. And um, yeah, nothing. I, he, he wins every time. He finds a way every time. He'll he, he'll find a way on Saturday night. I'm sure of it. Um, but it will be a tough fight. But for him, it's business as usual. Um, it's amazing to see him grow into this role. He's now stopped on the street. He's recognised everywhere. We, people are asking me when he's going to fight Lawrence Acoli. When he's going to fight for a world title. They weren't asking me that ten months ago, at, right at the start when we started. And. Uh, so that's testament to how far he's come and that he's growing into his role as a headline fire on Sky and we really do believe he's going to do, he's got a lot to give in the sport and hopefully he wins a world title at Cruiserweight and then we'll see him in the heavyweight division. Uh, I think that's his progression, very pleased for him and obviously Saturday night is a fundamental night in his whole career. Just to pick that back up as we had some people moving some stuff. Now, this is an IBF world title eliminator, so and the IBF are quite strict with things like this. All roads lead to Bradis. That said, Gulamarian's team have been on Sky Sports saying they'd love the React Ball fight as well. Great options ahead of him if he wins. Massive options, whether it's Bradis, Gulamarian, tough fights, no doubt. Makabu for the WBC belt, which I think is the one Richard really, really wants. And then Lawrence Okoli as well keeps getting mentioned. So, yeah, he's got to win on Saturday night. He then becomes number two in the IBF rankings. He's well ranked in all the governing bodies. We feel like we can make the world title fights. The deals are there to be made. Richard needs to be ready. Richard needs to get through Saturday night. And then he's got options, and that's the great thing about it. We still think that Lawrence Okoli fight is absolutely massive, but we want Richard to get a world title first and just prove to people it's not just sheer power, it's not just sheer aggression. He's a, he's a talented boxer as well, and he can be a world champion. You mentioned Akoli there, it's a big fight now, but if they're both world champions, if that's a unification, is that a fight you would be reaching out to, to try and get a deal done for? Yeah, 100%. We're never going to stand in the way of any big fights. I know Richard loves that fight. I know Lawrence loves that fight, but again, it has to happen at the right time. Richard needs to get a world title first. I think that's what makes that truly a big fight. And uh, Richard is still growing. Lawrence has been headlining shows for a long time. Richard's only just starting now. And so, yeah, 12 months' time, 18 months' time, it's a massive fight for the cruiserweight division. But I do think we'll see both of those guys at heavyweights. So They're both six foot five, six foot six monsters at the cruiserweight division. Massive power as well. So, um, yeah, exciting for Lawrence, exciting for Richard. It's good that we have two guys in Britain right at the top of the, of the world rankings and uh, ready to go, and it seems like they both want to fight each other. So we're on the undercard. Chris Congo uh, got himself Sebastian Formella in front of him. Formella we know from fighting Ben, from fighting Porter. Everyone's been asking him about that since this fight was made. He said today, this isn't about Ben or Porter, it's about me. Is that the right attitude? I think so, but at the end of the day, you can't get away from the fact Formella has taken Sean Porter the distance, has headline fights. Even his last two, three fights was Conor Ben and, and, and Sean Porter. So you're always going to get that comparison. And that's why it's a perfect fight for Chris Congo. 
it is his world title fight on Saturday. Obviously, he stepped up against McKinson. It didn't go well for him. And he tells me that that wasn't him. That was a terrible night. He had a terrible camp. McKinson was an extremely awkward fighter. This is his chance, and we've put it on a plate for him. We think it's a perfect fight for him. We think it's a perfect opportunity. But he's going to have to come through now and prove that he can be world level, and he has improved. And we think he will do that. But Sebastian Formella is coming here. You know, Errol Ceylon, this sees this as his last chance to, to really, after what happened against Porter, after what happened against Ben, really was beaten by a fair wide margin. He's coming to win as well. So it's an intriguing fight, but Chris has to deal with him, I think, convincingly. And if he can knock him out, it's a massive statement. Let's let's see, let's see. Brown Chelly, two guys that you know have not had it easy in the professional ranks, both been written off at times, and and here we are, brilliant crossroads fight. You think the styles are gonna gel well here? I think they are. I think Jermaine Brown's almost not broken a sweat so far. I think he dealt with Jamal Ladu, he then won the English title against Charlie Schofield on the Calm Brook card. And people in Manchester really rated Charlie Schofield and he just dealt with him, boxed at a distance and uh, he's a really talented fighter, works extremely hard outside of the gym. Zach Chelly, we know well, obviously a lot about, he won our tournament, he fights on the front foot, he's an absolute nutcase um, in terms of the way he fights, he's always looking for that knockout and so it's a beautiful clash of styles, it's a complete 50-50, 100% it's a 50-50 because I know both of these guys, we know both of these guys and we can't call it and it's a it's a great fight it's a great clash of styles the winner will go on to the title the loser will come again i think it's one of those where everyone's going to win from this fight and uh, it's one we're really looking forward to and i just know both of them will give it absolutely everything because i know how much it means i know how much they both sacrificed to even just to get to this position and so yeah that's definitely the fight of the night to look out for it's Vidal Riley's first time fighting in his home city of London. He obviously shook off the cobwebs up in Manchester, but speaking to him, he, he seems to be in this mindset of, yes, I've got this, that, and the other away from the ring, but this is serious business now. Is that the impression you get from him as well? 100%. The interest in Vidal Riley is like, I know we won't see it in the boxing world as much, but he's so well respected across music, YouTube, celebrity, fashion. He's got everything. And so the fact that he wants to go and do the most dangerous sport in the world, the most brutal sport in the world, and compete at the highest level is testament to him and testament to how far he can go. And in the amateur scene, he did extremely well. He beat Chris Billing Smith, he got great amateur record. And I think when people look back at that, they'll go, you know what, this guy is a serious fighter. The fact is, he also brings a huge audience and we'll see that on Saturday night. And it is his homecoming, it is his first fight in London and we're gonna see everyone coming out for Vidal. It's exciting because we have someone in the cruiserweight division that can bring a whole different feel a whole different audience and uh, everyone's going to benefit from that so really excited for him to get going and people will be very very impressed as to how technically good a boxer Vidal Riley is. Just a couple away from this, uh, Marshall Shields, any news? Early September we're going to announce very soon, I can't wait, it's obviously a fight that we've been wanting to make for a long time, we think it's an unbelievable fight for women's boxing, for boxing in general it's just a fascinating fight, it's a clash of styles. Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall, completely different personalities, but, but massive, massive talents. And uh, yeah, that'll be announced very soon, early September, and I uh, can't wait for that. So you've got Fury Hunter as well. Any other shows planned that you can kind of kind of give us an inkling to? There's a lot going on. We've got a brand new heavyweight signing to announce next week. We are having an amazing schedule in September. Obviously, Shields Marshall, a couple of other things that we'll hopefully announce in and around the same time ridiculously busy June, June 25th, Adam Azim out, Karis Artingstall from the Olympics gets a debut, Sam Eggington in his IBO world title, then into Hunter Fury with Ben Whitaker making his debut and uh, I'm hoping to make John Doherty against Diogo Costa which is a really, really strong fight as well. So three really strong fights for June, big announcements to come hopefully and Shields Marshall. So yeah, it's a, it's a busy time for Boxer and Sky and uh, a lot of activity in the market right now from all sorts of promoters, all sorts of broadcasters and it's unbelievable for boxing because these fighters do not know what's hitting them. They cannot believe how many opportunities there are, how many, how fruitful the sport is, the fact even if they lose they're getting opportunities and it's a beautiful thing to see and I really do mean that. I think competition is really healthy, really good and uh, obviously Sky and Boxer are extremely busy right now. Right, ben, thank you as always for speaking to Boxing Social.